I have here some position data as a function of time from a motion capture system. This is for a vertical jump, and I've plotted just the part of the data series where the person is jumping. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a filter, a Butterworth filter, to filter your data. So we're going to start out by identifying our cutoff frequency. In this particular example, I'm going to use 10 hertz. And I'm also going to identify our sampling frequency because we need to normalize our cutting cutoff frequency by our sampling frequency in order to normalize our data or in order to process our discretely sampled data as opposed to a mathematical function. So in this case, I know that my data is my frame rate, which I pulled out of my uh, data structure earlier up here. So uh, my sampling frequency is equal to my frame rate for the motion capture data. And I'm going to use a fourth order filter here. So I'm going to put in a four there. Then I'm going to create my filter coefficients using the butter command. And you need the uh, signal processing toolbox in order to use the um, butter command and also the filter commands later on. So the first argument that the butter command expects is the order of the filter, which I've called n order there. And then the second thing is it wants this normalized uh, cutoff frequency for the filter. So the normalized cutoff frequency for the filter is the cutoff frequency divided by the sampling rate divided by 2. And that's all it takes. It returns two coefficients, b and a, and we feed those into the filt filt function. We're going to use filt filt as opposed to just filt 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 filters forward and then back across the data, um, which reduces or which prevents the data from shifting as we filter it. So we're going to filt filt b a, and then uh, finally our data that we're going to feed in. So in this case, our data that we're going to feed in is the z com, the z position for the center of mass. So z com. And then uh, with that, that should all work. We'll double check it down here at the uh, command prompt. Make sure that everything runs. It does. Things show up. That's good. We'll run the whole code here in just a minute. Um, I've, from there, I've gone ahead and I've differentiated using the diff command to find the velocity, and then again to find the acceleration, just because I want to be able to compare what the effects of the filter are. Note that I'm filtering the position data, not the acceleration or the velocity data. You always filter the position data, the data that you've taken. You don't filter later on. And then I'm going to create a couple of plots here. We're going to create a figure with uh, the position data uh, unfiltered in black and filtered in a red dot dashed line. And then the same thing for the velocity and then the same thing for the acceleration. Uh, one thing to note here, I am plotting from end start to end stop in my time. So I've taken both of these. This guarantees that I'll always have a vector that's the same length and it allows me to start at 1.2 seconds, which is after kind of the beginning noise and end before all of the extra data that got collected while the subject was just standing on the force plate after the jump. So I'm going to go ahead and click run, run the code, and it pops up these three graphs. So here's the position as a function of time. And you can see that the Red line is the filtered line. I didn't put a legend on here. I should have put a legend on here. The red line is the filtered line, and they match nicely. And then here's the velocity as a function of time, and you can see that it still matches pretty closely. There's this little bump right here that's been smoothed out. It kind of shifts the bottom peak here just a little bit, but it's still pretty close. And then finally, you can see the acceleration data, and this is where it really makes a big difference. The black line is the unfiltered data. You can see all of the noise with the small difference and differences there in our um, numerical difference method. And you can see that the red uh, starts to overshoot the peak maybe just a little bit there. It undershoots this peak right here, but it's smoothing out the noise in the filter and is probably really a better uh, value a more accurate, a more realistic value. So that's the effect of filtering your data. And this is how you do it 
you normalize your cutoff frequency by your sampling frequency divided by two because uh, the filter has two, two sides to it. And uh, then you use the filt filt command before you differentiate. So uh, happy filtering. I'll see